I know he's not dead because he's in the house this morning. Give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Show me if you right. What a mighty God we serve. I'm like you all. I came to praise him. I came to have worship. I came to go to the next level. But first I want to say to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. I want you to pay close attention to the word this morning because you all like me, you're seeing things going on in the news. And you see how Israel is at the center of attention. And you see the Bible coming before you, being fulfilled. And you see prophecy being fulfilled in Matthew 24, there be wars and rumors of wars and famines, amen, and earthquakes in diverse places. So the, the word of God, that, that which we are preaching to you, you see that it's true. But I gotta deviate real quick. Um, I don't wanna miss out on the cancer survivors, and I know there are other ones in the audience that I know of, you know. Uh, I couldn't help but get touched by that. If you are a cancer survivor, just stand right now and let us give God thanks that God brought you through, amen. Let's give God praise, God brought you through. Look at all across, look at all across, you don't know, you don't know. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you don't know like I know what God has done for me. Now give God a shout of praise, amen. I've said so often, you don't know what the saints have been through. Why they're jumping and shouting and hollering, amen. God is a good God. I'm preaching already, y'all. I'm ministering to you this morning. And going through the book of Revelation, and another way I can say it, in navigating through it, because Jesus is going to say so much to you. I found a Reverend Clarence Larkins who has a good little navigation system through it. And I say, yeah, that's good. That will help us to navigate through it because a lot of information is going to go through it. Yeah, okay. Somebody say seven. seven. If you can think of seven, you'll never get lost through the book of Revelation. Amen. Seven means completion. Seven means perfection. On the seventh day, God rests, didn't he? Amen. So if you keep the number seven in mind as you go through the book, you'll know where you are. Because there are seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven persons, seven bowls of wrath, seven dooms, and at the end of the book, seven new things. Take it down real quick. Now they gotta buy the video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I knew Johnson's would get it, amen. <laughs> okay. Wanna look at Revelation chapter two and verse 12. And right before it, This is a salutation. Somebody say greetings. Greetings. All right. I heard that child. <laughs> this is the greetings in the book. He starts off with a, a greetings. To the angel of the church in Pergamum. 
Some translations say Pergamos. Right. These are the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. <coughs> Let's bow for a word of prayer. Come now, Holy Spirit. Feed your people with thus saith the Lord. What you want us to hear now at this time with all that's going on, feed your lambs and feed your sheep. Your sheep have special prayers. We all have special prayers this morning. Please hear our prayers. Bless your people, Lord. Save the lost. Bring your miracles. Bring your healings. Bring your deliverance. Bring your blessings. We all need you. Feed us through the, through the word and bless us through the word. And hear our prayers. And let every soul be blessed when they leave here. In Jesus' name we pray. We say, Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Give honor to God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for all of our sins. We thank God that he hung, he bled, he died, but on the third day, he got up yes, he did. from the grave with all power. We want to use as a subject title for you this morning. The subject title is To the Seven Churches, Pergamos, the Compromising Church, the Worldly Church. Church number three. Somebody say church number three. Okay. I'm going to read it again. Can I read it again? <laughs> Sister Hudson smiling. She know why I'm laughing. <laughs> I said, we're going to work together. Amen. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I got so much information this morning that Sister Hudson said, I am overwhelmed by so much information. But it's only because we're navigating through a book that has so much information. And this is a good road map where you won't get lost and you will appreciate it. Amen. All right. To the, how many churches? Seven. To the seven churches. Pergamos, the compromising church. The worldly church. Church number what? Three. Amen. Church number three. It mentions the two-edged sword that goes back to Hebrews in the New Testament to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. The Bible says, for the word of God is living and active sharper than any double edge two edge sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it what it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Paul also says in Ephesians that he says, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. The third church which Christ addresses his message to is the church at Pergamos. Some Bibles say Pergamum. Pergamum is located 
55 miles to the, to the north of Smyrna, the church we talked about on last Sunday. So they're making their way, delivering uh, these letters. The city name means parchment. It is where parchment was first manufactured. You recognize in the ancient days, they wrote on parchment. Parchment. Pergamon was located on where we call today Bergama, which means B-R-G-A-M-A. And Pergamon's history can be traced all the way back to the fifth century. Pergamos used much of its great wealth to build temples to idol gods. Can y'all hear me this morning? They had great money, but they used this great wealth to build altars, statues, and sacred groves filled the city. The primary local deities or false gods or idol gods in that area were four. Somebody say four. four. There were four idol gods that this city really worshipped. And they are Zeus, Athena, Dionysius, and Ascalopius. Can I go there? It was the first in temples to have a temple devoted to the worship of Roman emperors. Can y'all hear me this morning? Caesar worship was the most intense in that city. Oh, Rome liked Pergamos. Just a little historical facts and it's all gonna come together towards the end. Pergamos was the birthplace of Galen, the second most famous physician behind Hippocrates. And it had one of the most well-known libraries in the world, which even rivaled the library of Alexandria, Egypt. So preacher, why are you bringing all this to us? Because this was a very important city. Matter of fact, some say it was the capital of Asia at that time. Christ identifies himself to the church at Pergamos as the one who has the two-edged sword. And this speaks of Christ's judicial authority. How many know that Jesus has authority? This has the image of a warrior defeating his enemies in battle and pronouncing judgment upon them. Christ's words will punish his enemies. And Christ's words will defeat all of his enemies. There is power in the words of Christ. Saints of God, can you hear me this morning? Yes. The two-edged sword represents Christ's ultimate conquest 
of all world's powers and not just Rome. Can I back it up this morning? Revelation chapter 19 and verse number 15. The, the Bible says, out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the what? Does it have an S on it? Yes. The nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the wine press of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. Does your Bible say that? Yes. Putin thinks he has power. I ain't going there this morning. <laughs> Revelation chapter 19 and verse 21, the, the Bible says the rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse. And all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Tell two neighbors that's yet to come. Now, as Christ talks to this church, he begins by commendation. Mm -hmm. He begins by praise. Can I back it up? In Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 3, 13, I'm sorry. Somebody said commendation. Somebody said praise. So he starts off praising them, what they did right. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Both Christians and Satan lived in Pergamos. Christ knows all about Satan and his activities. He knows where Antipas, his faithful witness, was killed. He describes Pergamos as the place where Satan lives. How do you know that Satan lives in some of these cities? Satan controls and gives power to his own throne. Satan works on Christians to try to get them to compromise with the world. Somebody just say Pergamos. The Bible condemns worldliness. Worldliness is a serious sin. Can I go there this morning? John chapter 15 and verse number 19, the, the Bible says, if you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. Uh, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Tell about five neighbors, the world hates you. Then tell the same five, so what, amen. Y'all with me this morning? Because Christians 
have been redeemed by God's grace. They are called to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live righteously and godly in this present world. But Satan wants them to compromise. Whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. The church at Pergamos had drifted into compromise and was in danger of becoming intertwined with the world. Satan wants to bring the world into the church. Y'all don't hear me this morning. He would love to bring the world into the church. The throne of Satan, the throne of Satan refers to the emperor worship that was prominent in Pergamos. Somebody said Pergamos. Pergamos was a leader in emperor worship. But this was new to the province of Asia. The evil one was present in that city. Satan was behind it all. The emperor worship, somebody say emperor worship, had his headquarters in Pergamos. They erected a temple, help me Holy Ghost, to the emperor Augustus. That's where you get August from. <laughs> and the goddess Roma had stood in that city since 29 BC. Later on, they built another temple in the honor of the emperor Trajan. And then they had, had a special priesthood was formed in that city. Throughout the book of Revelation, can y'all hear me? There is a dread in the background of Caesar worship because it was required for them to say Caesar is Lord. Can I go there? Emperor worship was an agency of Satan's power. The Christian Antipas was probably killed by Rome because he refused to say Caesar is Lord. Because he wouldn't say it, they killed him. Can I go there this morning? Rome was an agent of Satan. Rome demanded absolute total commitment and loyalty. Rome was full of paganism and worldliness. Rome was Powerful. Rome didn't fall from the outside. Rome fell from the inside. <laughs> McGee said, that settles the question. We can see that Satan is not in hell. <laughs> you work with me this morning. He's working on earth. He's working on church folks. Tell three neighbors, Satan goes to church. Matter of fact, better than some church folks. Oh, 
I got to back it up this morning. Can I go for this morning? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8. The Bible says, hallelujah, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, wake up and stay alert. Come on, tell your other neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, I said, wake up and stay alert. I just want to help somebody. Caesar worship was the greatest problem to the church at Pergamos. Despite living in a city where Satan had his throne, Jesus compliments this church. Jesus says, thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith. Christ speaks about their faithfulness. Somebody said faithfulness. The church at Pergamos showed their faithfulness in their refusal to deny Christ. Can y'all hear me? Some of the members in the past had been asked to deny their faith in Jesus, but they refused. And Jesus said, this is praiseworthy. Can I go there this morning? Uh, they showed a constancy in, in holding fast to Christ's name. Can y'all hear me this morning? They had a personal trust in Christ. They didn't deny the word of God. Can I go there? To those who stand up to pressure Christ compliments them. It means so much <laughs> to the Lord. Can I go there? Don't give in. McGee says, God takes note of our circumstances. He knows what we are going through. Oh, I dare you to tell three neighbors, he knows what you're going through this month. Come on, he knows what you're going through. They held fast to his name. They confessed Jesus as Savior, Mediator, and Lord. Proclaiming Jesus is the link between heaven and earth. Can I go there? They did not deny the faith even when bitter opposition came in. Even when times got rough, they did not deny him. Can I go there? John MacArthur says the, the faithfulness of the church at Pergamos is a challenge to Christians today to stand true when they are being engulfed by the evils of this present world. Can I talk to you this morning? And seeing so many, so many departing from the faith and being tempted to compromise their stand for the truth. How many know this world wants you to compromise? Can I go there? But keep on standing for the truth. Can I go there? Keep on standing for the truth. Tell my three neighbors, keep on standing for the truth. Come on, keep on standing for the truth. Jesus says in compliment, in those days when Antipas, who was my faithful martyr, my faithful witness, he stood up for Jesus. Antipas was Christ's faithful witness. But I want to ask the question, what about you? Ask your neighbor, what about you? Come on, what about you? Are you a faithful witness for Jesus Christ? Are you witnessing for Jesus? Oh, I hear Karen talk about witnessing in the market. 
by the third century so many Christians had given their lives for the for the Christian cause how many know that a lot of folks are dying today folks are dying everywhere but ask your neighbor neighbor are you a faithful witness for Jesus Christ let that soak in in spite of the insistence on emperor worship and the pressure from the outside the church of Pergamum was holding on somebody said holding on somebody said this is praiseworthy no amount of opposition can destroy genuine Christian faith. Somebody said, hold on. Now, that's the good part. That's the commendation. They held on from the inside. But Christ has a complaint against them too. They did good fighting of opposition from the outside, but they had a problem on the inside. Tell your neighbor, this is an inside job. Can I go there? They had some praise stuff, but Jesus, I got some complaints too. Can I back it up this morning? Yeah. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14. Here's the complaint. But I have a few things against thee. Can I go there? Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit what? Fornication. Some Bible says sexual immorality. Can I go there this morning? This is a strong complaint. Sometimes, even though we do good, we may still have some things we need to work on. <laughs> to your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, he ain't talking about you. <laughs> so that's a Pergamos. <laughs> The church at Pergamos was good on not worshiping the emperor, but they were weak on discipline. They made some compromises. Somebody said compromises. They allowed some things to go on in the church. They allowed some things to go on that they should have known better not to allow. Can I go to this morning? Some of the members of the church attended heathen festivals. And when they attended the heathen festivals, help me Holy Ghost, they got caught up into all kinds of immoralities. At those heathen festivals, a lot of fornication went on. And a lot of drunkenness went on. And some of the church folks were in attendance. Somebody said Pergamos. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, 
some places you ought not go. And then tell your other neighbor, some things you ought not do. And then just shout, you ought to know better. Not bowing down to the emperor, refusing to say Caesar is Lord, all that is good. Jesus says that is good, but this compromising lifestyle, Jesus says that you have is just not good. Compromising is not a new thing. Compromising, help me Holy Ghost, has been going on since the days of Balaam and the time of Moses. Can I back it up this morning? Uh, Numbers chapter 25 and verses one and two. The Bible says, while Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them to sacrifices to their God. Can I go there? The people ate and bowed down before these gods. Does your Bible say that? Compromise, help me, Holy Ghost, is not new. Watch this. King Balak hired the false prophet Balaam to curse Israel. Balaam tried his best to curse Israel, but he couldn't do it. Because what God has blessed, no man can curse. I need some help this morning. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, oh neighbor, I'm jumping and shouting, and I'm shouting and jumping. What God has blessed. No man can curse. Anyhow, Joanne, just anyhow, baby girl. Let me go there. But watch this. Then pay close attention. But his strategy, his strategy was, if you can get the child of God to compromise and come out from under the protection of God, out from under the umbrella of God, then we got him. Can I go there this morning? Can I back it up this morning? Numbers chapter 31 and verse 16, the, the Bible says, they were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and were the means of turning the Israelites away from the Lord. In the land, in what happened at Peor, come on, Holy Ghost, so that a plague struck the Lord's people. My God. Can I go there this morning? Yeah. Balaam's counsel was to get the people to commit sexual immorality, fornication, and then get them to worship idol gods, and then you got them. They come out from under God's protection. They come out from under the umbrella of God's protection. Out of the umbrella of God's blessings. Get them to come out from under God's covering. How do you do that? Just get them to compromise. They don't have to come totally, just let them compromise. They got all those promises working for them, so just get them to compromise. To come out from 
under God's protection. Can I work with y'all this morning? Yes, sir. Christ wanted the church at Pergamos to break from their old pagan habits, uh -huh. their old pagan worship, to make a clean break from the world. Some of them wanted to hang on to the world on Monday. Friday night, you couldn't tell them from the world. Come on, somebody. Evelyn Butler and Perkins, stop laughing. Hey, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Don't mix the world with the church. Come on, come out from amongst them. <laughs> Gotta go there this morning. Jesus says, this is the teaching of Balaam that John is talking about. Christians compromising. Christians living lives of immorality. And then saying, it's all right. Bowing down to the world. Saying, it's okay. Can I go there? But the pressure is on. Refusal to take part in the heathen feast meant you were withdrawing yourself from the whole social life at that time. That was pressure. The pressure was on. Can I break that down? Refusal to participate in the heathen feast meant you could lose your job. You could lose your trade, Courtney. Yeah. You could become what we call an outcast. The pressure was on. Ask three neighbors, what you going to do? <laughs> Can I go there this morning? The church at Pergamos was totally unaware of the dangers of compromising. There is a danger in compromising. Some thought, I can just go to the festival, you know, and an idol isn't anything. It's not real. Or, or, or how can I witness unless I go where Satan is? Tell somebody excuses, excuse. Christ says in this letter, he's going to destroy those who persist in their worldly practices. It is more important that they fear Christ's sword than the Roman sword. It is a short step from compromising with the world to forsaking God altogether and facing God's wrath. Can y'all hear me this morning? There is a danger in halfway covering with the world and halfway covering with God. Can I break it down? It's dangerous to have one foot in the world and another foot in the church. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. Can't you, can't you hear what Joshua said? Choose you this day. Whom you going to serve? Come on, somebody. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. Oh, get about five minutes conviction. We going to serve the Lord. Come on, we going to serve the Lord. Come on, we going to serve the Lord. break it down. We got going in, in this deep. The church at Pergamos could, resi could resist could. the satanic power of Caesar being Lord, being said to be Lord from the outside. Can I go there? They resisted sin from the outside. 
but the sin on the inside was defeating them. Yeah. The problem was the, the sin on the inside to count. Yeah. Come on, somebody. The problem wasn't so much outside the church. The problem was inside the church. In the house. In the heart. I dare you tell three names. It was an inside problem. Come on, somebody. The church at Pergamos is symbolic of the many churches throughout history that have compromised with the world. If the society has accepted it, then some churches say, well, it's okay now. But you don't go by what the society says. You go by what thus saith the Lord. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Tell somebody they had an inside problem. Can I back it up this morning? Oh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 15, the Bible says, Likewise, Dr. Martin, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Christ continues his complaint. This church had its problems. They had two disobedient groups that they were tolerating. The Nicolaitans and those who followed the doctrine of Balaam. Can I go there? Both of them disobeyed the decision at Jerusalem, at the Jerusalem Council in regard to fornication and worshiping idols. I'm going to say that one more time. Can I go there? At the Jerusalem Council, they told the Gentile Christians who were coming in, we want you to stay away from worshiping idols and we want you to stay away from fornication. Can I back it up this morning? Uh, I'm going to read to you from the Jerusalem Council. In Acts chapter 15 and verse number 20, Peter and the group told them, this, this, this is John, this is what you got to do. James, who was here, told them what you got to do. Uh, Acts chapter 15 and verse 20. Instead, we should write to them telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols. Can y'all hear me? From sexual immorality. Can I go there? From the meat of strangled animals and from blood. They were told to keep away from fornication. Can I go there? They were told to stop worshiping idols. But they want to have their own way. Christ is letting them know, I got my eyes on you. God got his eyes on his churches. Take name and name. The church is not a social club. It's the house of the Lord. Come on, John. I'm thinking. It's the Lord's house. It's a house of prayer. Tell your name. This is not a social club. Christ told me, I walk up and down my churches. He says, I'm in the house. I do house inspection. Good God Almighty. The church wanted to reach a compromise between the Christian life and the worldly Greco-Roman world. That's the church who wants to please Christ and wants to please the world too. Just give the people what they want. Tell them what they want to hear. Don't talk about sin. Don't talk about judgment. Don't talk about fornication. Oh God, no. Don't mention hell. 
fire and brimstone. <laughs> Don't draw the line. Yes, sir. Worldly church. Both the Nicolaitans and the Baal folks said it's okay to fornicate. Come on, somebody. It's okay to worship idols. The world is doing it. We can do it too. Some churches have lost their minds. Completely lost. I'm trying to hold myself back. Is cotton picking a bad word? I'm asking, I didn't say it. Nita and Moses, I said, is cotton picking a bad word? Y'all text me and let me know. My mother would let me know. Ain't no preacher got no bitch about cotton picking. <laughs> First, I asked, I didn't say it, okay? Reverend, I didn't say it. Pergamum was standing steadfast for the faith when it came to fighting persecution on the outside. But on the inside, they were compromising with Satan, living a worldly lifestyle. Haven't you seen some Christians who are just worldly? the songwriter say don't let the devil ride because if you let him ride some of y'all in the back seat he just woo so oh devil oh devil Dr. Taylor stop laughing Dr. Dove, there's something that we don't want to miss here. The false apostles, the false apostles are seeking to seduce the Christians into idolatrous eating and fornication. This is like the serpent seducing Eve. Her eating, her eating of the forbidden tree was like idolatry. Obeying Satan rather than God. Paul speaks of it in terms of fornication. Can I back it up this morning? 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 2 and 3. Our brother Chambers, the, the Bible says, I am jealous. Jealous. for you with a godly jealousy I promise you to one husband to Christ yes. so that I might present you as a pure version to him but I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Is that the word of God? Yes. Christ says those who overcome the Nicolaitans seduction will eat of the tree of life. Those who overcome and do not compromise with the world will eat of the tree of life. Can I go there this morning? The world says certain things are okay, but Christ says it's not okay. But hang on to Christ. Tell three neighbors, hang on to Christ. Come on, hang on to Christ. All kinds of stuff is coming at us, but we got to hang on to Christ. Am I right about it? There was a group in the church that said, there's nothing wrong with being friendly to Rome. What harm is it in putting a little pinch of incense on the altar and affirming your loyalty to Caesar and calling Caesar Lord as long as you don't mean it? 
Y'all better help me this morning. But Antipas refused to compromise. But there are those who took the easy way out and compromised with Rome. Jesus says, those who refuse to eat Balaam's food will eat manna from heaven. Can I go in this morning? Friendship with the world is hostility with God. Can I back it up this morning? Can I go there this morning? James says in James 4, 4, he says, you adulterous people. Come on, somebody. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Am I talking this morning? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes what? An enemy of God. Is that in your word this morning? Is that in your Bible this morning? The majority of the people did not participate in this era. But Christ wanted the church to correct the problem. Jesus says in an essence, get it together or else. Coming to the last part of the book. Now he gives them a warning. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. Can I go there? Somebody shout, warning, warning, warning. warning. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 16. What does that say? Repent, therefore. Oh, good God of my sister Wade. Hallelujah. Magnac bells his chambers. Otherwise, I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Is that in your Bible? Christ tells the church to repent. They were guilty of tolerating this compromising behavior. Can y'all work with me this morning? They had not purged them out of their fellowship. Can I go there this morning? Yes, sir. This is a call to show their seriousness by repenting of their leniency, leniency towards those who are compromising with the world. Can I go there? Failure to do so would mean dreadful consequences to them. The church will suffer for those things that it allows. I'm going to say it again. A church will suffer for those things that it allows. Can I go there? He adds a threat. If you don't do this, this is what I'm going to do. But if not, I will come to you and will make war against them with the sword of my mouth. When Jesus returns, he didn't want the church to be on the wrong side. When Christ returns, we don't want to be on the wrong side. To your neighbor, neighbor, we want to be on the right side. Can I go there this morning? This message is not just for Pergamos. Somebody says for Smyrna, amen. <laughs> Unwillingness to repent shows that a person is not a faithful believer. Can I go there? 
in the book of Revelation, you will see that the glorified Christ is a warrior. Hallelujah. And Christ means business. He fights with the sharp sword of the word of God. Can I back it up this morning? Say neighbor, neighbor. Oh neighbor. Christ is a warrior. Tell the other neighbor, neighbor. Oh neighbor. Christ is a warrior. Now tell yourself, self. Oh self. Christ is a warrior. Can I back it up this morning? Exodus chapter 15 and verse number 3. The Bible says, The Lord is a warrior. Can I go there? The Lord is his name. I dare you to say this morning, The Lord is his name. What is his name? The Lord is his name. Now tell about five neighbors, The Lord is his name. Come on, help yourself out. Say, the Lord is his name. You want to break through this morning to say, the Lord is his name. You want to deliver this morning to say, the Lord is his name. You want to heal in this morning to say, the Lord is his name. You want to break through? Say, the Lord is his name. Who needs a miracle this morning? Who needs a healing this morning? Who needs a blessing this morning? I dare to shout, the Lord is his name. It's about the Lord. It's about the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is his name. Is he a warrior? Is he a great God? Is he a mighty God? Delivering God? Healing God? On time God? way making God, miraculous God, almighty God, good God almighty. To know the Lord is his name. Because I know his name this morning. He's the Lord God almighty. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my rock. He's my shield. He's my fortress. He's my buckler. He's my way maker. He's Alpha. He's Omega. Beginning, the end, the first, the last, the rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Friday morning star. He's my pick me up. Did he wake you up this morning? Stars on your way. Food on the table. Clothes on your back. Shots over your head. Is it your shout? The Lord is his name. So he's a warrior. He's a mighty God. He's a great God. Well, he's a healer this morning. Somebody said, touch me, Lord Jesus. Fill me, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, I fall. Good God Almighty. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Go down the Red Sea water spit. Pull down the walls of Jericho. With Daniel in the lion's den. With shot like Meshach and Abednego. Fire with furnace. The Lord is a warrior. Now tell three neighbors, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Tell them there, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Somebody behind you, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Is he all right? Is he all right? You feel like praising him? You feel like clapping those hands? You feel like stomping those feet? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. What's his name? 
coming towards a close here. If the church is to be blessed, Christ says, the false teachers must be dealt with. Christ speaking to the leaders of the church says, repent. This is what Christ says, that you can't allow these folks to go on there. The offenders, which are called heretics, got to be dealt with. False teachers will cause the downfall of a church. So they, need, they don't repent, then excommunicate them. Now, let me, I want you to hear this. The church fails when members are not disciplined. If you're wrong, you're just wrong. You got to take it, you're wrong, and then straighten up. Mama said, fly light. If not, there'll be consequences. The church that fails to discipline its members will be a destroyed church. Jesus says, I am coming to you quickly and will make war with you with the sword of my mouth. Judgment is real. Matter of fact, Balaam, who tried, who did get them to go astray, he got judged with a drawn sword. Can I back it up? Numbers chapter 22 and verse 31. The Bible says, Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw this one who led the people astray. And he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his what? With his sword drawn. And what Jesus said, I'm going to come back to you with the sword in my mouth. He came to Balaam who led the people astray with a what? Sword. So he bowed low and fell face down. And with a sword, he was killed. Can I back it up? Numbers 31 and verse 8. The Bible says, Among their victims were Evi, Rechem, Zer, Her, Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed who? They also killed Balaam, the son of Beor, with what? With the sword. Christ has power in his words. He says, I'm going to come back to you if you don't clean that mess up with the sword of my mouth. If you don't quit compromising with the leniency, I'm going to come back with my sword and I'm going to judge you. Can I go there? John MacArthur says, quote, sinning believers, sinning believers, can I say it again? Sinning believers should be made to feel miserable. And unbelievers should be made to feel uncomfortable. They should be confronted with the powerful word of God. The word of God can save sinners. The word of God can turn lives around. And if you're a worldly Christian, a raggedy Christian, you can get it together with the word of God. Y'all know what a raggedy Christian is. Y'all t- take this front row away. I'm back here. They laughing too much for me. I'm trying not to talk. 
but I have, I have even gone to the hospital and visited folks watching movies they shouldn't be watching. Uh, I want to say, that's why you're in here. <laughs> I said, I, I want to say. <laughs> I, I didn't say it. I had better sense than that, amen. I thought the movie they watch. Brother Sister Hudson, I'm getting ready to close, but but I was on mission. And I hope you took notes. Cause there was very intention in how this sermon was laid out. Salutation, greetings, commendations, things you're doing good, you know, praise you about, like a report card, and then um, things you need to get together, complaints. And the reason why I had that, those seven up there, Two churches he had no complaint with. Two churches he had nothing good to say about. <laughs> but he ends all of them with a promise. Each one with a promise. He keeps his promise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to land it, but it just got good up here. Yes, it does. In my years on this earth, as I talk to my grandson now, I can tell him he's 18 and I'm over 18. I can talk to him, says Campbell. I talk to him now how good the Lord's been to me. I, I, I said, I've had some storms, mm. but I talked to the grandson about the goodness of the Lord. See, as I get younger, I, I can look back about the goodness of the Lord. See, I'm trying to test with Sister Chambers. I'm trying to move on, but, but as I get younger and I look back, I can see what he brought me from. I can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When I look back, I can see what he's brought me through. When I see four little children, I've grown folks now. When I see 17 years in the school district and 42 years up and down the road, I, I can tell my grandson, the Lord will keep your grandson. To you put your trust in the Lord. Put your hands in the Lord. Oh, I've seen some stuff. There. I'm just talking about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. How many of you are here? Yeah. How many of you are wake you up in the morning? How many of you put food on your table? Clothes on your back? Shout over your head. How many know he's a miracle worker? Is he, is he all right? I dare you to clap your hands this morning. Say praise the Lord this morning. Yeah. Is he good? Is he good? Is he a mighty good guy? I got so much I can look back over. What does that say? When I look back over my life, can I go there? Oh, I, I, I've had some bad days. I've had some rough days. I've had some tears stained eyes. I've had some, some humble cries. But when I think things over, when I think things over, I think things over. Can I go there? My good days. 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 
finish a sermon, but it just got good. See, every now and then, Rob, when you preach, it get good to you. You throw it out, it comes back at you. And it starts blessing you. And you start thinking yourself about how good God's been to you and where he's brought you from. I've seen many moons, many nights, God has been faithful. Ah, oh, I could be a crazy man. Good God could have lost my mind. But the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living keeps me want to jump and want to shout. Tell the story. What Papa say? How I got over. Say about five days, how I got over. Shame on y'all. Y'all want to let a preacher finish his sermon. Ah, oh, is he good? I think he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. That's all right, man. I think they came to have church this morning. They came to shout. This is a rowdy, this is a rowdy crowd. Man, this is a rowdy crowd, Doc. Rowdy crowd. This is a shouting crowd. This is a Holy Ghost party. Holy Ghost party don't stop. Woody, a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Come on, Woody. Amen. Amen. I, I, I got to hit these brothers. Amen. This is all in my bones. All in my feet. Can I go there? Can I go there? I heard your mind say, it's like fire. It's like fire. Is the house on fire? House on fire. Sinner, start talking about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Go hit that little bit. Hit that little bit there. I'll finish the sermon in a minute. Come on. Come on, hit that a little bit. Tell, tell, tell me if it's stupid, I just feel like you're praising it. Come on. Tell about ten neighbors, he's all right, amen. Come on, say he's all right. Come on, clap your hands, shout, he's all right. I've been fasting. I can feel it. I'm fasting. Some of y'all are here fasting. I know every shop is praying for the church service. Every Christian is praying for the service. Come on, get your blessing this morning. Say, so Lord, heal me in my body. Say, so raise my husband up. Heal my husband. Heal my wife. Heal my church family member. Somebody shout next level. Y'all gonna stop right there now. I do the rest in my house. Y'all can't talk about me if I don't do my steps right. Thank you, Percy. I know I know I got your, your help. Percy wake me, amen. Jonathan, amen. My two buddies there. Left and right. I want you, Come on. like I'm in the classroom, I want you to comprehend yes, how we put it together. Yes. How we put it together. I start with seven. 
because so much information will be given to you, but you're going to be able to navigate by those seven. Because if you know, hey, there's seven churches and there are seven seals and there are seven trumpets, you know, and then there are seven dooms and seven new things, all that, you know, then you can pick up where you are by what number you're on and it'll take you all the way through the book. What we're ending was very important on a promise. He ends on a promise with this church, with all the churches, a promise. Here's what it is, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. The Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, capital the S, that means, that means it's the Holy Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. Chris, that's hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name. Somebody say new name. New name written on it known only to him who receives it to the next level committee whoever has an ear and you've heard that before this is to grab the attention of the listener so that he can know what has just been said is of special importance. There is a promise to the overcomers. The one who overcomes hostile forces. From the beginning of your faith in Christ to the end, no matter what the enemy has thrown your way, you have overcome. God is going to give you a reward. Somebody say hallelujah. Christ is going to be your hidden mana. Christ is going to be your true mana. Christ is the bread from above. Christ himself is going to be the satisfaction for all believers. And the spiritual strength to those who put their trust in him. We're going to be with Christ forever and ever. Somebody say amen. Then Jesus talks about the white stone. Many opinions on that. The white stone represents your personalized invitation token not to the heathen feast but to the messianic feast to heaven this means you will be accepted by Christ you have been favored by Christ Christ promises the overcomer entrance into eternal victory celebration in heaven. Victory celebration. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, victory celebration. You got your ticket. 
and nobody can put you out. David said, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Forever as I land. The white stone will have your name on it. A different name. Different in nature. A name that is superior in quality. Reflecting God's special love just for you. And that name will say that you belong to God. I dare to shout, I got a new name in glory. Someone said, glory, hallelujah. I got a new name in glory. Landing. This name reflects those personal marks and signs of God's adoption of you and your new status as a victor in Christ. Yes. A name that nobody knows but you. The church Pergamos. Everything gonna be all right. If you don't compromise, give God a hand of praise.